Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, October 5th, 2021 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Big story today, of course, was Facebook's outage. And while, of course, it's not necessarily sort of a security event that affects many of us, has made the news big time. So I figured I'll talk a little bit about what we know has happened at this point. As I'm recording this, uh, Facebook is uh, back up now for about half an hour or an hour after being down for approximately five and a half or uh, six hours hours. There is no official statement yet from Facebook as to what happened, but Brian Krebs is reporting and he usually is right about these things that the root cause was a BGP update that apparently went wrong. Now, initially, a lot of reports suggest that it's a DNS problem. And of course, DNS is a common culprit for issues like this. And uh, DNS certainly had issues, but uh, DNS was only down because, well, there was a BGP, a routing problem. At approximately 11.30 Eastern or 15.30 UTC, the Facebook IP address prefixes were withdrawn from global routing table, pretty much bringing down anything Facebook related. So Facebook, Instagram, as well as WhatsApp were not reachable because, well, the internet no longer knew how to reach uh, the respective IP addresses. And with that, of course, Facebook DNS servers were also not not reachable and that's why it sort of manifested itself as a DNS problem initially. What prolonged the outage was that uh, the BGP update not only removed access from the outside to Facebook but also router administrators were no longer able to actually reach affected routers in order uh, to fix uh, the problem that the initial bad update caused. And according to some press reports, there also were some issues with, for example, physical access and such, because all of that, of course, depends on the network. And uh, for example, uh, door opening systems weren't working anymore. Also, of course, internal communication like email and such was not working either, which probably didn't make the response easier and faster. As a side effect, uh, some ISPs reported that they were seeing a significant increase in DNS traffic. Again, DNS not the root cause here, but well, if a site is not reachable, if you don't get responses back to DNS query, the default is we'll try again and that of course then uh, keeps uh, multiplying the queries as people keep trying uh, to connect to Facebook and no responses are coming back. I wrote up a quick post uh, just outlining the troubleshooting steps uh, to figure out that it was a BGP issue. Probably going uh, to write another post uh, just uh, with uh, looking classes and uh, how to use them and uh, how to use them to troubleshoot issues like this. But on the side of uh, Facebook's outage, uh, we got a couple other security news items uh, to cover. And one is the dark botnet, also sometimes called dark IoT botnet. This is a smaller botnet, not quite as well known as uh, Mirai or, for example, the Mozi botnet, but still quite active. And what's a little bit special about it is that it uh, goes after very specific, fairly recent vulnerabilities not necessarily in like super popular devices, but it really sort of picks and chooses the vulnerabilities to look after devices that the big botnets may have missed. One vulnerability, for example, that I've seen it pick on lately is in Gutenberg Gcam E2 and Gcode cameras. These cameras run a firmware provided by UDP technology CISA did publish an advisory about uh, these uh, cameras end of uh, July, so fairly recently, and there are a number of different vulnerabilities. Not 100% sure which vulnerability they're going after. It's, uh, I believe, yeah, pretty much exactly a dozen of different vulnerabilities that are possible here. 
And if you're using Apache Airflow, the open source workflow management system, take a look at a blog post by Inteaser. They looked at many bad coding practices around Apache Airflow that leak credentials to various services. Of course, the idea of a workflow system like this is that it can connect to different services in order uh, to automate certain tasks. To do so, it does need credentials. But you still need to be careful how you are providing these credentials, that you're not uh, storing them in the code, that you're not logging them, and where you're keeping your configuration files. That's really what this blog post is about, and it mentions a number of ways how people commonly store credentials insecurely in Airflow. Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening, and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.